I'm Alin Staley. I'm Professor Emeritus in Orthopedics from the University of Washington and Seattle Children's Hospital. And today I'm going to talk about the shelf acetabuloplasty and uh, say that perhaps it is the best choice for treating late onset Perthes disease. See what you think. Once it was thought that Perthes disease was kind of a nothing disease, but in 1964, McAndrews and Weinstein in Iowa presented this paper in Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery, which was a follow-up of Perthes disease at 47.7 years. And they found that it wasn't a nothing disease. A lot of these patients had problems. About a third had required hip arthroplasty. These were tough Iowa farmers, even. And more recently, this was the same conclusion in Germany. Uh, this was mid-duration, uh, this was mid-adult life, and they found that the patients had pain and, and deteriorating function after Perthes disease. So this is not a nothing disease. And also, they uh, have more recently, Perthes disease is described in older age group, and this is where the worst prognosis is in by right. And he and they felt that the study suggested that the shelf acetabular procedure, acetabular, uh, procedure was excellent and should be included in any future control studies on Perthes disease in the older age group. This was also the conclusion of um, Osman and all uh, in the uh, UK, and they compared four different methods of treating Perthes disease with long follow-up, varus osteotomy, shelf, no treatment, or cast. And they concluded that the shelf was the best procedure, and that it probably should be done early in the procedure before, early in the op in the disease before uh, deformity developed. Well, there are a lot of shelf Perthes operation papers, all describing a good result in Perthes. This was in Greece, this was in UK, uh, this was in Taiwan, this paper in Netherlands, and this is in France and then again in Turkey, and then more recent papers, Belgium, and Turkey again, and then in the United States with 49 hips, and Korea, and the UK, which we talked about before, all confirming that this was a, the shelf was a very good operation of Perthes disease. Because it is a simple and safe operation. There's no osteotomy that can go on to mal or non-union, there's no real risk of major nerve injuries. There's your long ways away and a very simple exposure. And there's no hardware to remove. And also that's effective. effective. That it's best done before deformity develops. Uh, and one can put on a cast which quiets the hip and reduces subluxation. Or it can be done without a cast if the hip is stable and one wishes. And it's also wonderful for preparing for the next procedure, because regardless of the early treatment or late Perthes disease, it's likely to require replacement arthroplasty in the adult life. And Heinz Wagner, who was a hero of mine, would always say, prepare for the next procedure. What is the next procedure? And make sure you do something that will help make that successful. And the shelf operation does that. It doesn't distort the acetabulum, as we mentioned. There's no metal inserted and it adds to the bone stock. So what is the procedure of the slotted acetabular augmentation procedure, which was designed to overcome some of the problems of the old shelves? Well, first you can do a bikini incision, or a short, very short incision. You look at the anatomy, and you take the reflected head and incise it anterior and displace it posteriorly. You create a slot just at the acetabular margin, so the, uh, so the uh, graft will be weight-bearing. And then you graft or take a graft from above from the ilium and place the strips out over the capsule of the joint to create uh, adequate uh, containment, but not too much so as to produce impingement. And then replace the reflected head if you wish. Some people skip this step. It doesn't hurt to be incorporated in the graft. The next step is to add bone graft above that in the slot here in this, in this triangle and then uh, apply a spike cast if one wishes. I described this technique and the slotted acetabular augmentation in my book in, 19, in 2004 and show this case. It's a 10-year-old girl who had subluxation and, and uh, Perthes disease with a poor prognosis and with a cast and abduction, she centered nicely and the shelf was placed and then at 11 and again at 12, she had an excellent result. And this was a, a technique which is, seems to work in my experience and in others.
So the new approach can be a short incision, no cast for stable hips, or a, walk, a walking spike cast which if the hip needs to be stabilized or reduced. And then there are a lot of different kinds of techniques which have been described. So in summary then, we can say that late onset Perth disease has a relatively uh, a bad prognosis, a fair to poor outcome expected. And the shelf acetabuloplasty is likely to produce possibly the best outcome. And it's a procedure with minimal risk. It seems to be per uh, effective. And it's also great preparation should a replacement arthroplasty be necessary in adult life. So thank you for watching. And please send me any comments to Staley at uw.edu.